Hey, and welcome back, screen tappers. You like that? Screen tappers? <laughs> That's, I've been trying to come up with a name to call ourselves, and uh, it's something that screen tappers, I've, I've been throwing that idea around for years, and I ran the idea past my Facebook group uh, quite a while ago when, when, when we had a Facebook group. <laughs> Still do, but don't, everything's inside the website now, inside our, our forum and, and community there. And, uh, and I kind of got a 50-50, and I was expecting a lot more than 50% to say yes, because 50% said no, which was surprising. <laughs> anyway, I, I like it. I like screen tappers, because regardless of what we use, whether it's a, an Android, a... Oh, I just lost my screen there. No, nah, still live, just the computer died. Uh, so whether we use a uh, Android, iPhone, whatever it is, it doesn't matter... Uh, even if you're using a tablet, an iPad, you tap the screen to take the photo. So I think it's quite appropriate. I like it. Screen tappers. Let me know what you think in the comment if you like screen tappers. And uh, a bit of technical issues here. It's all right. Bring it all back. Uh, okay. So today we're going to cover a couple of distortion things. And normally when you think about distortion, you think uh, it ruins the photo. But distortion can be quite creative. So you can take advantage of that distortion that happens with us, typically with the smartphone, with that default wide angle uh, camera, because that's what it is, it's a wide angle camera, your, your main camera, because it lets in a wider depth of field, a uh, wider field of view. And then you choose your other lenses and you can get even wider, or you can, now you can get macro and telephoto, just, it's just incredible, isn't it? We're just sport for choice with what we can do. But some of it does introduce a lens distortion, and then if you get a cheap, Lens attachment, then um, you know the impulse buyer at the counter at the at the professional camera shop, twenty dollars clip on. Uh, they can have distortion as well, so it can either be a negative thing, and if it is, and you you can just crop it and get rid of some of that distortion, or you can lean into it and go, you know what, that looks really creative, and unashamedly uh, even edit and, and, and further accentuate that distortion, make that distortion more prominent in your composition. And that's how I'm bringing this back to composition. It is related to composition because those bendy, uh, walls and all that sort of thing can add to where the eye goes. And, uh, the main one I want to talk about is subject to lens distortion. So with a wide angle lens, you, if the closer you get, the bigger that subject is and the further away the smaller the, the background gets that makes sense now i know you have no doubt <laughs> we've all experienced this you see this amazing sunset and you think to yourself wow that looks amazing i'm going to capture that i'm going to record this moment pull your smartphone up to your eye and go oh my gosh that horizon it looks tiny that sun looks tiny and the photo doesn't do it justice, and that's a, a, a comment that we, we're all guilty of saying as well when we proudly want to show off something and it just didn't capture it. And one of those issues is that subject to lens distortion. Now, I've got a photo here that I'll show you. This is, this is how you could use it creatively. This was a squirrel, and getting it nice and close. Uh, I, when you get it nice and close with a smartphone, uh, what it does is it reduces that depth of field. So it's... Depth of field is area in front of the main subject that where you tap on the screen. That area in front is out of focus, and it's a little bit out of focus. But then the background past that point, that focal focal plane, that point of focus. After that, it then gets blurry and blurry and blurry and blurry. The further away the distance is, and that's why I quite often say, if you want to have a natural blurry background, turn change your position. Step one of my system. Change your position so the background is far away, or have have the ground in there so that you can actually see the ground. You can actually see the the transition going blur, and that creates real depth. And that's one thing that's often forgot about in in composition is is depth. You got to not just play, place the main subject and all the supporting focal points and 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 uh, elements. You want to try and create that depth, make it look three dimensional, and this uh, subject to lens distortion really does that. You can see here, so you can see here the nose is out of focus, and when I when I took, you know, it's like you take lots of these shots when this this uh, decisive movement happens, this this moment of action and activity, and so I took lots of photos, burst photos, 
But this one here, I tapped on on this squirrel's eye, and I think it was more important to because I've got another one there uh, somewhere <laughs> that the nose is in focus, but then the eyes are out of focus. So I, I like I'm a bit funny. I like to make a connection with the eyes. I think it looks better. You can still see the whiskers. You can still see the symmetry of the whiskers and all that sort of thing. I think it's a pretty cool shot. It's fun. It's a fun shot, and that's what it's all about, isn't it? So. Uh, Yes, yeah, so subject to lens distortion. Um, so if you, another example that I used to use in when I ran my workshops in in Melbourne, in person workshops, was I'd take them down one at uh, lots of different laneways, and there was one in particular where you'd have thousands of people there every day taking photos. Really popular near near the Flinders Street Station, and. I wanted to try and show people something unique and something different instead of just, oh, I could have gone down here and just taken snaps by myself. So I wanted to give them some learning points. And one of them was this subject to lens distortion. And quite often on the corners of the buildings, there would be, because uh, people would go down there with all different types of mediums of art. So you'd have ribbon tang off things, you'd have uh, 3D clay sculptures kind of plastered onto the wall. So it was really, it was a really cool place. Um, a lot more than just graffiti and art. It was, it, was, it was really cool stuff. So I would quite often take them to these spots where there'd be something coming off the wall and I'd get them to go in nice and close and get in really close and take a photo of that with the location and the contextual background of the graffiti walls in the background and then that subject to lens distortion, whatever this was, and, and quite often they were tiny, they're only a couple of inches tall, small, they would fill the frame and look quite big, and then the rest of it would recede and look, look really cool. All right. What else did I have here? Oh, yep. Yeah, okay. Uh, now, I've talked about lenses. and This is an example of just using a fisheye lens. Now, uh, Stream and Optics with their Pro Series, uh, Pro Series, I think it's called. Anyway, they have a three-pack of lenses. I don't have those on my website. You can go straight to them, streamandoptics.com.au, and... Uh, I just concentrate on the cinematic line, and but their their three pack has a fisheye in there, so they have a uh, a little macro lens which uh, is has a little bit of a magnification, got to, got to hold it right on top of it, and they have a uh, wide angle, and then they have the fisheye. So the wide angle now, I think the wide angle for a little low profile, it's not it's it's kind of sorry streaming, but I think it's kind of obsolete now. Unless you go for a good quality wide angle lens, that then you can take advantage of the uh, the bigger aperture and the the main lens. I don't want to get technical there, but uh, but this three lens kit has this fisheye, and this fisheye is fun. I mean, this was this was our our dog Lucy when she was a pup uh, at, at this home, and and uh, <laughs> she's having lots of fun there. And I think because she's a puppy, she's having fun and she's throwing this thing around. And having that fun kind of lens distortion there, I think that, uh, I think that really makes it. If this was just a photo taken from eye level down at the puppy with the normal lens, normal, no, no consideration like that, it, it just wouldn't be the same. So that's what I mean about lens distortion. You can use it to your advantage. So I think that really makes it look fun. It does. All right. I just want to have a look, see what else I had here that I want to cover. Uh, there was also... Forced perspective. I want to touch on that one. Let's bring it up in my course. Okay. So, uh, so I talked about the. Yep, that one there. I talked about how lenses can have. Uh, yeah, that that subject to lens distortion. So things that are smaller look bigger. Things that look further away look look <laughs> look smaller, and. Here's my son. Oh, get rid of me. There we go. <laughs> Love it. Um, so yeah, you can see he's holding the Eiffel Tower in his hand, which is which is pretty cool. And but you don't you can do this in your own you can do this in your own backyard too. You can you can uh, hold something in like across from the, in a park. So something that it only needs to be about ten meters away. So some of us have backyards that are, that are that big that you can have something you can hold something in the garden back corner. You can hold that in your hand. Another option is just if you've got a kitchen with a bench that's set back from the wall, you can have something uh, in the background in the corner of the room on that bench, and there's something you know closer to the lens. 
holding in your hand or, or something, you get that forced perspective distortion. So a cup on a bench could look massive and then the actual uh, uh, air fryer, coffee machine, something like that in the background can look really small. So if it's something, if you've got a plate of food that you cooked on the air fryer, you can have the plate of food closer to the lens and it could actually be as big as or if not bigger than the air fryer that you just cooked it in, just for, for an example. So that way the plate of food becomes more of the dominant uh, visual anchor, becomes the emphasis, it becomes what people fixate on, they, they notice and fixate on. And then after that they then, because the air fryer is further away and looks smaller because we're using that subject to lens distortion, it adds that contextual element but it doesn't take over the scene. Does that make sense? I hope it does. All right, okay, what else did I want to cover? I think that was about it today. Uh, let me just have a quick scroll through here and see if there's another example. I think that was pretty much it. Uh, there is one more talking about, I'll just touch on this really quickly. While I've, while I've got you, I've got your attention. <laughs> so, uh, so this is a cathedral inside and if you, if you are fortunate enough to still be able to travel or in your hometown, you've got places like this to go and check out, it's just amazing, then you've more often than not taken a photo like that one on the left where the walls kind of go in like that and converge. The reason for that is that same distortion. The top of the, the, top of the ceiling, or the top of the ceiling, the ceiling, <laughs> the top of the walls at the ceiling, <laughs> uh, they taper in. And when they taper in, they... Uh, oh, my chat's been disconnected. Oh, okay. Just put, leave something in chat if you find this interesting, find it valuable, you want something to some uh, another technique or tool tip that you want me to cover. I'm sure this chat will will, will reactivate and I'll um, and I'll and I'll catch up with you later there. And uh, yeah, if you've got an idea, I'll bring it forward in the in the plan for the next thirty days. Well, what what about today? Day number eight, nine, nine. We've got another three weeks to go. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, so where, where was I? So tapering. So tapering the wall. So if you are a real estate photographer, now I'm not talking about professional real estate photographers. There's not much value I can add to them from a mobile perspective. Uh, but if you are a real estate property manager or an EMB, Airbnb owner or, so, or you just want to take your own photos for your own records when you move, then position your smartphone halfway between the floor and the ceiling. Get smack bang in the center, measure it if you need to, because you want to get this pretty close. Get exactly halfway, and then when you're exactly halfway, make sure you don't have any of that tilting, because you don't want to keystone it, you want it just nice and straight, and shoot into the corner, into the space, that sort of thing. So you, you, you're shooting straight at it. Now, a scenario like this inside a cathedral, <laughs> you know, it's like, 20 meters in the air, it's a bit hard to get 10 meters in the air to get that midway point. <laughs> but there are tools, there are tools to do this. Lightroom, if you have the uh, paid subscription with Lightroom, they have a geometry tool which works brilliant. Uh, iPhone camera app called uh, Pro Camera, they have a, a option there when you're actually taking the photo, it will actually adjust it live for you. So when you line up the photo, it will just go bloop and it'll straighten it for you. So that's like $1.50 a month for that subscription. The other option is Snapseed or some of your other, I think even the iPhone, it does now, the iPhone inbuilt editor also has an option to change the tilt. So there's lots of options to, to fix it. That said, when you do tilt it, you change the perspective, so quite often it will zoom in as it does it. So just be mindful here, you can see here this one on the, on the right. That's been corrected, but you can see just how much that, that roof, that ceiling has been cropped out and I've lost all those beautiful bits in the top there. Bits, I'm sure there's a name for it. <laughs> uh, all right, so I think that pretty much covers it. So we covered all, all around lens distortion. There's a lot more I can go into, and I do in my course. Uh, there's the details there to learn more about the system. So we covered, uh, would we cover subject to lens distortion? So that scenario where the sun is a long way away, there are ways of fixing that. And I have a plan tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm gonna to show you how to fix that, which is pretty cool, it's pretty exciting. It does require an accessory, but that's okay. I'm just here to let you know about it and, and show you what you can do, what's achievable. 
So that's called uh, compressing the background and kind of going to debunk a myth or a, a, um, a, the way of thinking of a lot of photographers out there. They, 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 they think the way you set it up is incorrect anyway. So we'll, go, we'll talk about that tomorrow. So it's uh, compressing the background. It's cool. Uh, we 